All right, so as you can see, um, I just explained to your classmates that were in here, we just don't have enough time to do one compound at a time. So I tried to break the colors up so you can tell the difference between one compound and, and the next. We'll do this one last, okay? So as you can see, some of that content is new, okay? Actually, there's a lot of that content that is new. There's only one up there that is not new content. And what color is that? Brown. Okay, it is the brown one. That's correct. And perhaps some of this may look familiar. I'm not saying that you should remember this at the drop of a hat. No, that's not what we're getting at. Some of this may look familiar and say, okay, yes, I do remember this. And for each and every one of these, the, the rules that you apply for naming these, that has not changed, okay? So um, one of the things that it's a little more complex for those of you who take this class next year, um, maybe we're just doing too much of a presumption and just saying, oh, yes, they remember this. But sometimes, it's just much easier illustrating this rather than telling you what the rules are. I think sometimes that's true in sports too, because if you look at the specific definition of, um, per se, serving a volleyball or what into the net is or how different types of rules can change from uh, one, one year to the next. But just keep in mind, you always have a useful tool and or your textbook and this content I'm taking off is on page 721 okay and it just has this brown box here okay that we're illustrating right here so I'm just gonna read through this really quickly because we've applied some of this already it just says alkane nomenclature but you would Illustrate that with alkene nomenclature and alcohol nomenclature and also acid nomenclature. Okay, it says name the parent hydrocarbon. We've been doing that for one or two days. None of that has changed. Find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms that have straight chain branches. Add the suffix ane to the prefix corresponding to the number of carbon atoms in the chain. Okay, of course, none of that has changed. Rule number two. Add the names of the alkyl groups, which, who can name an alkyl group or a derivative that we've talked alkane, about? Alkene, no. Methane. No. Methane. That's one. Ethyl. That's two. Propyl. That's three. Isopropyl. And isopropyl. Those are the four alkyl derivatives that we've learned so far. Methyl, ethyl, propyl, and isopropyl. Okay. Add the names of the alkyl groups in front of the name of the parent hydrocarbon in the alphabetical order. When there is more than one branch of the same alkyl group present, like what we would see here and here, okay, that's what that's referring to, okay, attach the appropriate numerical prefix to the name. Of course, of course DI means two, TRI, or TRI means three. And, and so forth, but we don't go beyond three, okay? And then do so after the name have been put in alphabetical order. Then okay, for our purposes, I do believe that's enough to start with for now. Other than uh, rule number three just gets to be quite long, but there again, I think it just makes more sense.
just to apply the prior knowledge that we do have. So with this, what is our longest continuous chain here? Okay. So what is the prefix for any four carbon compound? Because what is the organic family that we see here? No. 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 Right. It's got a double bond in it. It is an alkene. Okay. So once we've established that, if it's an alkene, what is the suffix for an alkene? Okay. E N E. Okay. So what is our parent chain for this? Okay. So we're getting closer. Oops. We don't need butyene. Okay. So with your um, limited knowledge so far this year or experience that you had two years ago, is that explaining that compound completely? No. Why are you right? Okay. So where's that double bond located? Right. It doesn't matter if you start on the right side or the left side. It's after that second carbon going this way. It's after that second carbon going this way. So therefore, okay, try to wrap your head around this. If there is nothing written after a number, okay, that is referring to where either an organic family is located or where a bond is located. In this case, it's the same thing, okay? So we can break this down. This means an alkene. This means that it's four carbons long, and this number two here is just telling you where that double bond is. Again, it doesn't say methyl or ethyl after this just because it's only telling you where that double bond is located. Okay? This is similar in nature, but look at the structure of that. Okay? In other words, one of the things that's probably a selling point for different types of chips or maybe maybe bags of popcorn. I don't think I have anything like that. But I want to say Doritos maybe is known for this. In the upper right-hand corner, it'll have the number zero on there. It's because people are going to flock to that and say, I'm going to buy this bag of Doritos because it says zero grams of... No, no. You've seen it before. You just don't remember. Can you be a little more specific? You are correct. You are so close. Zero grams of trans fats. Okay? Your body metabolizes different types of fats for different reasons. Sometimes if they're trans compounds or whether they're cis compounds, okay? But trans fats are really, it's not that they're bad for you, it's not that they're healthy either, but it's just a selling point. Oh, there's zero of them in there. So we're gonna purchase that bag of Doritos. Okay, same type of logic that we've applied here that we wanna do here as well. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do, what is your longest parent chain? Okay, so we can get rid of this, so we just give ourselves a little more room. No, did not. So your longest continuous chain is what? Five, okay. What's our organic family? Okay, so we know that this is pentene, okay. The organic family, the parent chain, this is where it gets to be a little tricky. Was this a linear structure like but 2-butene was? No, the structure is totally different. The reason that that's so important is when you look at these guys, these hydrogens, that will give you a good idea. Well, not a good idea, but gives you the idea of you need to be just a little more specific because What's the number associated with that double bond? 
Why? You're, you're right. Because it comes after the second carbon, but we just need to be a little more specific because this isn't a linear structure. Because if we just had two pentene, that would be two pentene. But notice our structures are different. So that's why we need to be a little more specific. I am trying to keep an eye on the clock for you ladies so you can get out of here, okay? But since, notice that these are pointing in opposite directions, okay? So what that means is, to, to me, what makes the most sense is this parent chain is a trans compound, okay? It, it's a long transition process to get from one side to the other because these hydrogens are pointing in opposite directions. So what we want to say is trans to pentene. So that's when we break there's like, it's like not linear? That's correct. The question was, is that when we do it when it's not linear? That is correct. So if there's a trans compound, there's also another one that we call a cis compound. And what that would mean is as follows, okay? If we had this carbon down here, okay, then we have what's called cis to pentene. How do you tell the difference? Go by however them hydrogens are oriented. If it's like this and they're in the same direction, that is a cis compound. But if those hydrogens are pointing in opposite directions, if I don't tip over here, okay. Yeah, humans are, did you know that humans are top heavy? We're kind of an engineering marvel. When you got a physique like this, you're really top heavy. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> okay. So notice these are pointing in the same direction. So it is a cis compound. Okay. Questions on this one? All right. So. All right. Apply your same rules here. What's our parent chain? Okay, so with any parent chain, whether it's this one, this one, this one, or any of them that we've done, what is your prefix for six now? Say that again. Okay, so this is our prefix. But how is that different than every other compound that we've talked about? There's a hydroxide ion on it. There's a hydroxide ion on there. Okay, so do we remember what that possibly was two years ago in OH group? I think you said it. Mm, you're, no, no, it's what you're referring to is hydroxide, but that's an inorganic molecule. This is more so an organic type. Okay, so. This is where we would say, if Mr. Wagner was in here, because I told the seniors, it only pertains to us two, not to you on Friday and Saturday nights. No. Right, because only himself and myself were over 21. I'm, I'm just over 20, and so is Mr. Wagner. I'm just, so I. just a little further over 21, if you believe that. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We appreciate that. Okay. So if this, if that OH is referring to an alcohol, which it is, what's the suffix of this compound? Okay. So what that means then is this is, we can't put this. Why not? I know that's not right, but that's an alkane. 
okay? But it is an alcohol, okay? So that must mean the suffix is this. Why are you right? Because, again, assign this to the lowest number. So why is there nothing written after that number two there? It's telling you two things, either one, where a multiple bond is located, or two, the organic family. So in this case, the organic family is an alcohol that's on the second carbon. And that's why there's nothing written after that two there. Okay? We give ourselves a little more room here. Are any questions on what we've done so far? Okay. We could always we could just read the book and just say, well, that's what the book tells us to do. That doesn't help you. Okay. This our goal is to have this help you. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and do this one now. How is that different than everything we've done. I mean, there could be some similarities here now if we did that, because that would be an alcohol, but this is not an alcohol. Say that again. It has something to, yeah, it has something. It, right. Do we possibly remember from two years ago. Okay. So what's our parent chain? So there's your prefix. We can't put an E there. If it was a ketone, it would be pentanone. But it's not a ketone. And it's not pentanyl because it's not an aldehyde either. No. Oh, I see it. Oh, I see it. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. He's giving you the answer, guys. Yeah. We're just waiting for you guys to get it. Why won't you fill them in? No, I'm letting them get it. Uh, I, I don't buy that. Please tell me you play poker with him. But just don't leave it as that, though. Yeah. That's only half of it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the other half, then? Okay. So when it comes to this organic family, it's always on the first carbon. Even if you put that carboxyl group over here, it's still pentanoic acid. Is there anything branching off of that pentanoic acid? Yeah. Oh, wait. Well, we already counted for that. This whole thing is COOH. So there's not, yeah, so this would be correct then. Okay? Can we erase this? Okay. We will save the isomers for tomorrow because because we're 125. Is that correct or 120? Okay, so we're running short on time. So what happens here? This is maybe the simplest one that we've done so far. 
apply your same rules. Okay. So I'm putting that all the way down here. Okay. So what do we have branching off of? Okay, so, and you got to be careful with these because we could do a low down dirty trick here, okay? And we could do, we could do that there, okay? So, if, we, if you just imagine this was here, that presents a problem because it's no longer not a name. Because that means you've got two carbons, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? So that's why please be careful when you're looking at a molecular formula as opposed to a structural formula. So what would that mean? What, are, are these molecular or structural formulas? Molecular. They are molecular formulas. Because if we wanted a structural formula for this, we can take this from the molecular, okay? So how many carbons were there? Three. There's our second one, there's our third one. We're running out of space here. And then here is three, five, six, and seven. So this is the structural formula as opposed to what we had earlier, which was the molecular formula. Oops. There. Okay. So what do we have branching off of this parent chain? A methane or Okay. You're you went too fast. You're too far ahead of yourself. Okay? Because what type of alkyl derivative is this? Methane. Not methane. Methyl. Methyl. So if that's what this is, what must this one be? And what's this one? Propane. No. It's not propane. Propyl. Propyl. Okay. So now, where are these derivatives located? Obviously, we're not going right to left because the numbers would be too big. So we got two, three, and five. Okay. So we've got these numbers okay so we have to go in alphabetical order okay so with that being said where are our methyl groups located well two and, two and three okay two comma three dimethyl dash what All right. Is this correct? Don't we disregard prefixes like this? No, only isos. Yeah, we disregard this. But M still comes before P anyway. Yep. Okay. The only one prefix that you do use for alphabetization is. Then you go by the I, not the P. So in other words, if this was an isopropyl group, which a different way of writing that is as follows. We're really going to throw you for a loop now. That is an isopropyl group. Now wrap your head around this. Don't think, oh my god, how in the world could that be an isopropyl group. Well, remember, X marks the spot, so here's X. So that's, this is the carbon to carbon bond that we see. Okay, how many methyl groups are on this carbon? Why, why? right, why? There's the two outside of there, so that means there's a methyl group there. Where's your other one? To the other side of it. And then what's left from this? So this is the structural formula 
relating back to the molecular formula for isopropyl. Okay, should this have been on here, the 5 would have come first. Yep. Why? Because you're going by that. Okay, ladies, you need to get going, so, all right. Hopefully things are going well. We will catch up to you next time.